Hi everyone and welcome to the Smart Cities Chronicles. My name is Adam Beck. I'm host of the Chronicles. I'm also executive director for the Smart Cities Council here in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, this is episode 86 of the Chronicles, but also uh, recording uh, a vodcast for our Digital Twin TV channel uh, at the Digital Twin Hub. Um, and today, what we're going to discuss, a little bit of a debrief today. Uh, I've got um, Kerry and Janet with me. We're going to be talking about the New Zealand Digital Twin Summit that was held over in Wellington, New Zealand on Thursday the 8th, just last week. Um, we're going to run through sort of what we saw and heard and what we feel and think from that day. Um, but let's start by getting a little bit of an orientation of who my guests are. So, Janet, can I start with you? Who are you and what do you do? Janet McBull, I am the Director New Zealand for Smart Cities Council ANZ, based here in Hamilton, New Zealand, the North Island. Beautiful. Thanks so much, Janet, for joining us. Kerry, who are you? What do you do? Where are you <laughs> <Morning>. from? <laughs> um, I am, I'm I'm Kerry. Uh, I'm the Digital Practice Leader for Oricon in New Zealand, um, based down in the sunny, chilly south, uh, south of Christchurch today. Sunny and chilly. I yep. know. We're, we've sort of got uh, different climatic conditions for for all three of us today so um janet and kerry thanks so much uh thanks so much for joining us um you were both at the new zealand digital twin summit last thursday uh in wellington kerry let's um let's kick off with you if i can um it was it was fantastic to have oricon as our sponsor for the day so you got a good view of all things that happened i'd like to start at the top if i can um, just before we jump into the program, however, um, can you share your views on sort of New Zealand, digital twin, um, the journey so far? How would you sort of summarise where New Zealand's at at the moment, sort of, you know, in that sort of lead up, lead up to the summit? What was sort of the, the vibe and the situation? Um, Look, I think there's been a lot of talk about digital twins in New Zealand for quite a few years now. And um, I guess that's what has been probably the most pleasing thing to see for me anyway, is that the conversations are continuing and that they're also maturing. So, you know, a few years ago when we had the first session um, in Wellington, there was a lot of talk around definitions. Mm -hmm. And I think this this year I'm starting to see a lot more in terms of progression from that. So we've agreed the definitions um, everybody, of course, has their own sort of nuances that they bring to those, but generally we are all agreed. Uh, and we're now looking forward to sort of collectively working on pathways to outcomes. So no matter whether they're an asset owner or designers or consultants or in the construction um, field, we're all sort of aligned, well, mostly, you know, in the journey that we're all on. So I think that's what I really enjoyed, the real mixture of people who'd uh, signed up and, and come along to the session last week. Yeah, and, and we had a we, get, we had a great turnout. I was I was really surprised that mm. it, it kind of probably felt time uh, time to sort of get the band back together again. As you say, it was 2019, I think it was, mm. when there was that um, that previous session in, in Wellington. Um, uh, Janet, for you, um, how did you feel the timing was of the summit, and and what was your general sort of feeling before we went into the day around digital twin in New Zealand? Um, same as Kerry, I felt that we've moved, you know, we've progressed quite quite far and in some parts of, of the country in different sort of sectors, I would say, um, still a bit of a lag, but um, but it was good to see that people, yeah, weren't, weren't sort of, um, and leading up to the event even, it wasn't, I think that the good turnout was from the perspective that a lot more people were aware of digital twins and, the, and their capability and their potential. And it wasn't shoulder tapping for invitations. It was more of a come along, and and they did, um, and yeah, and I and I felt that the the group that we had um, really was a realization for everyone in the room, and and amongst the panelists even, um, that there is quite a lot going on. And I think the timing, in terms of the timing, it was great for. Um, getting the band, the wider band together to learn from each other. I feel like the panelists learn as much from each other as the audience did from the panelists. And I think there were, and I saw evidence of all day, I saw evidence of people connecting and, you know, exchanging business cards and, and talking about catching up later because what, what it did was 
yeah, it was brought that brought the different thinking and the different pieces of work together. In terms of as a country, um, we're we're um, working through developing a digital technologies industry transformation plan. So the first one that um, the government rolled out in 2019, launched in 2020, was the Agritech Industry Transformation Plan. And now we're doing the digital in, uh, digital technologies industry transformation plan. And a big part of that is um, AI as an enabler, but also within that. Um, data-driven um, innovation and I and I feel that and, that and that's being released later in the year and timing wise I've, and the digital strategy is being released and the national AI strategy is being released and I so I feel the timing of this was quite quite good in terms of getting getting those pockets together before the release of, of something like that and so now we're we're we've got a whole lot more people on the same page in terms of this, this opportunity yeah and and timing wise good because um it, it's going to be critical for those pieces to connect right i mean the common mm -hmm. thread through all these initiatives is is data digital yep. twin is a, is a data play um and um it's great to say data and we want more data and we want to hoover it up and collect it but um really in terms of unlocking the value ai mm -hmm is going to be critical. So uh, it'll be interesting to keep a watching brief on how New Zealand goes at a national level to stitch those things together. Um, mm -hmm. But for now, um, let, let's turn to the program itself. We kicked off the day with sort of a state of the nation. Um, and, you know, we had um, local government represented there. We, we had um, uh, folks that were talking about different asset classes, infrastructure, um, we did, uh, just on that front, we did uh, note, particularly in that, um, uh, that first session, um, the sort of somewhat imminent um, plan, infrastructure plan or approach to infrastructure plan and the NZ Infrastructure Commission has signaled mm -hmm. this sort of idea and approach to really looking towards advancing a national digital twin. Kerry, um, from that uh, opening session, the State of the Nation, um, what did you hear? What did you see? Your thoughts? What resonated with you? Yeah, I think it, uh, for me, it really set the scene um, for the rest of the day in the big, which is what it was intended to do, um, of course, as much as anything. But what it got me thinking about early on was the context. So um, the context within which we're having these conversations. And, and in New Zealand, obviously, there's been a lot of change um, tabled, as you say, the first item maybe from the Infrastructure Commission. Um, but there are others, you know, with the RMA reforms, with water reforms, there's certainly a much broader policy and political context to the conversations that we're having. Um, and I think that was recognised really early on in the morning. And uh, it was really good to do it like that because it sort of got us thinking that, in, in some ways, the external environment um, is actually going to play a huge part, um, both in terms of influencing what we do and also perhaps helping us to focus what we need to think about. Yeah, absolutely. Janet, what resonated for you? What did you sort of latch on to coming out of that first session? I felt um, I felt the panel mix was probably on point. So, so we had the local government um, and probably the two, two out of three or four that are doing quite a lot in this digital twin space um, or getting there um, in some cases. But I felt that the mix was right because Greg Greg was there and he was talking about the national digital twin idea and he was thinking about the, um, the, the work that we're doing around digital engineering. And he was also talking about some of the stuff that the Building Innovation Partnership is doing. And that was very much at a national scale. And then we sort of dove into the into the into the city and what does that mean for people and what does that mean on the ground in different parts of the country? So that was the, that was the key thing for me was that this is not a um, this is not a play at a at a um, at any at any sort of level individually that together this needs to this needs to um, this is a conversation that's happening around the country in different parts of the country but also at different levels and that's that's what we need to bring together and the realization that um, it was also connected I think was the other mm. thing I think for mm. the audience yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I um, I kind of liked how, you know, whilst there's that backdrop of the Infrastructure Commission and a national digital twin, and Kerry, you mentioned sort of um, water management um, as an issue, that there just seemed to be quite a nice coming together of both the built environment and the natural environment. And I think New Zealand um, just... The, the very nature of it, the, the, the sort of 
the, the value of natural resources, the strong agricultural um, sort of sector, that, that there's there's really a great opportunity. Um, not saying there isn't for Australia, but but I just really get a good sense, uh, a, a welcoming sense from New Zealand that the natural environment from a digital twin perspective and, and valuing data in our natural environment um, is coming through just as much as the built environment as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think some of those perspectives um, and even there are sort of plenty of examples as well of, mm. of how people are progressing their own digital twins in the natural environment, um, particularly in the water um, and in manufacturing, we are starting to see some real leadership um, of thinking in those areas. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, sorry, I was going to add to that, and I was uh, after there was so much chatter on social after the event, and actually a couple of people have already reached out to me. Um, one of them being, um, you know, to say, oh, oh, I didn't know this was going on. There were there was a lot of I uh, didn't know this was going on would have turned up, um, you know, and and so there's lots of interest in a future future event, but more, um, oh, I'm doing this too, and I'm doing this too, and a couple of the examples are actually in. Um, ones in one which I was quite surprised about was um was in the um what would you call it like the bio bio like where the bees are you know in terms of bees and pollinization right, and yeah, under, yeah. understanding that environment a bit better and then another one to do with energy um so yeah no there's there's things happening outside of just the infrastructure and the mm. in the city's context and I think that's what we we brought that mix together and and for a future event I think yeah we just need to that we did this Adam recently didn't we and digital twin isn't just for just for a building it's not BEM by itself it's yeah yeah and, and just on that Janet um I forget who said it but it was that first panel I remember taking the note down where the comment was if we just build digital twins in New Zealand we fail Right. So there was this real sense that this is well beyond just, you know, a, a technology and data enabled capability to do things better. Um, it, there, there seems to be a little bit of a narrative there that this is kind of a, it, there's something more whole with digital mm. twin and data in New Zealand. And I don't know what that is. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not in, in New Zealand. I'm not there. Um, but there seems to be um, certainly um some some real important meaning behind it and, and i don't know whether that goes to probably you know session three that we had you know we had Kay marie there talking about sort of the you know the, the, the critical uh connection to to maori culture and and that that sort of um uh, that, that that sort of opportunity to to really you know as you say you know make this more than just sort of you know steel and concrete and infrastructure um it there's something there. I, I, I can sort of feel it and it's quite pleasant to sort of see. And I really picked up on that strongly. I think, I think for part of it is also um, that there is so much data. It's, it's almost like to, it's, there is so much data that people have realized that actually we need to be offering something that's um, that's positive around all this data being around and people's data being captured. And so what is the positive? The positive is the focus, not just on the economy, there's a focus on well-being and communities as well. Um, and I think in New Zealand, we're small enough to focus any innovation in this space on, on a number of stakeholders rather than just one, you know, just, just looking at it from one perspective. And that's where the Indigenous perspective is quite important because it's a layer, a, it's a layer across, but it's also... Um, it's just looking at things from a from from a on a you know with a lens that 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 I said I I would say that a lot of other countries probably aren't. Um, and the other thing I I feel is that um that we need to that we we need to in order to leverage the technology to its full potential we need to have that cross section of stakeholders in the room with these conversations. So I'm glad that the um you know, some of the work that's being done in the data-driven innovation part, part, you know, portfolio of the um, digital technologies industry transformation plan is just around awareness. So, you know, what is awareness about data and what does it mean to, to, to have data? And then what do you do, you know, what is the potential around data? So that education piece to ensure that there's people that have a seat at the table that otherwise wouldn't, um, I think that's a big function. So that inclusiveness of different stakeholders in the conversation will ensure that we, we come out with something at the other end that does, as you say, um, cater to a number of um, a number of you know um, applications as opposed to just singular, and then that's a better investment. Mm, absolutely. So, um, so 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 we leave session one 
that first panel, State of the Nation. We did a bit of reflecting back the journey up to, you know, last week and, you know, a backdrop of, you know, potentially a national digital twin. Mm -hmm. um, we move into the second session around capability. So we're getting a little bit more granular now. Um, and we we opened that session up with just a, and Janet, you, you sort of gave a very quick overview to the audience again about sort of the lens that the Smart Cities Council views digital twin. Yes, it's a digital replica of a physical or natural thing, um, but it's it's kind of more than that. It's a set of capabilities that, you know, we, we need to build and we are building. Um, there's got to be a connection between the, the physical and the digital to allow data to move. Um, got to be able to ingest data, integrate it, um, and then, you know, have those capabilities of, of analyzing so that we can generate insights, mm -hmm. um, sort of model and scenario test and simulate so we can sort of see what's possible and what, what, what sort of we need to do to push things around to make better outcomes. And then, of course, visualization is another mm -hmm. core capability. So we got a little bit more granular in, in, session, uh, in session two. And that was kind of like, okay, well, New Zealand wants a national digital twin. Great. Um, do you have the capability to sort of, you know, mm -hmm. sort of fire it up and, and extract value? Uh, Kerry, did um, did that sort of um, panel start to sort of really give you any insights into whether that's going to be possible or not? What did you take away from that session? Yeah, it, it was um, it was fascinating to hear where at this stage where all of the examples really started to come out. Um, and, you know, we have people talking at all different levels of maturity in terms of, you know, perhaps they're at the data capture stage, but they have a vision for how it might fit together. Or, you know, some people, um, such as Wellington City, have got a really advanced understanding of what the digital twin could mean and does mean for, for the people who consume it, you know, who mm -hmm. benefit from it. So completely different ends of the spectrum, but... Um, really valuable insight, I guess, all along the all along the way. And for me, I think it was um, there was a lot of conversation around. It's okay to not be perfect. Um, it's important to make certain that the value is placed on um, the data and and the outcomes that that can drive. So, you know, every little piece of work that you do towards collecting more data needs to be. Um, viewed through that same lens of can we connect it to other things does it add additional value mm -hmm. um, how does it integrate and then um, I was also really um, pleased to hear people looking around them so you know if you're working in one particular area of a particular facility then you know they're thinking about the context within those um, individual digital twins might fit so that you know that's evidence in itself of a big progression in our way of thinking in New Zealand so people actually jumping in and having having a go and you know as you say that is um <clears throat> that's the New Zealand way so um what that ecosystem of parts looks like at the moment you know the thing I was thinking about as we were talking mm. was does it matter if it's not all the same mm. um does that matter and and are we sort of clear on you know, is it true that the collective of the sum of parts, you know, is bigger than it ever was individually? And, and if that's true, and it seems to be the thinking at the moment without national alignment, you know, on mm. the framework and standards, then, you know, I think that that's great. So that session was, you know, it was really kind of inspiring um, in a lot of ways. Yeah, it, um, you know, when we look back at sort of those that were on the on the panel, you know, Graham from, you know, Think Project. So we've sort of got a, you know, a, a private sector technology kind of vendor company in there doing great things. We, we had, you know, Tom from the Innovation Quarter um, from Callahan, um, you know, so we know we've got that good capability around, you know, digital engineering and BIM and things like that. And then Stacey from Marlborough, district council coming in and saying well look for us digital twin is is around data and mm -hmm. and governance and and um you know be, being able to sort of get conditions in place so that we can value it and start to use it kind of in some way you know regardless of sector project type or or, or what have you um my my question to both of you around this capability issue is um 
we, we, we certainly have, you know, some pretty strong capability in place, I believe, around built environment, digital transformation, right? And I'll even go as far as saying sort of <laughs> those fundamentals around spatial and GIS and things mm -hmm. like that. The question for me, I'd like your comments on this, and this is not just New Zealand sort of specific or, or, or unique to New Zealand. This is equally applicable here in Australia, but um, how are we going to get to a place where, um, and let's just take local government for a moment, where the chief planner knows and values the digital twin capability as much as the asset manager, as much as the landscape architect, you know, as much as the community, you know, development officer. Um, you know, we're really trying to sort of advance this idea of digital twins for all, you know, all sectors, all disciplines. Um, is that sort of fanciful thinking, do you think? And, and for New Zealand, how do you think that pathway potentially sort of, you know, looks? Kerry, do we want to start with you? <laughs> um, I think that's where your concept of the marketplace really becomes so powerful because that's the you know, the demand and for and supply of digital twin capability. And, um, you know, speaking, um, you know, on behalf of the consultancy um, area that, you know, clear requirements and clear mandates and clear links from procurement through right through to asset management and operation, you know, that that's something that we dream of um, mm. in, in industry. And so, you know, absolutely. And we would look, to the asset owners, um, not only to help them where it's practicable, but um, for them to actually develop, you know, what is their own internal standards and what do they look like? And, um, and as soon as we get to a point where that's, you know, that's reasonably well defined and it gives us all an even playing field. So I think, you know, that's just one example of the benefits. And um, we're already seeing that. Mm. Uh, being driven by some of our asset owners in New Zealand who, you know, have put a lot of effort into the thinking um, and the definition of their own internal standards. So I think, you know, that can only be a good thing. Um, mm. And that's just one example, but it's the one I'm closest to, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Janet, your view on this one in terms of the digital twin being a capability for all sectors, all departments, all agencies? I think absolutely. I think going back to my comments around, we need we need the different stakeholders at the table so it can be. So what we've started, what we've continued rather, because it was started um, by Wellington City Council really in 2019 with the original, the, the first Digital Twin Summit, is that bringing together of the different stakeholders. So in terms of a pathway forward, I mean, the other person on that panel was Professor Walmsley from the mm. University of Waikato. Mm. Um, and then another, as I said, other people have reached out since that missed out on the on the event, but they're keen to talk is, um, you know, there are other universities, there are other Crown Research Institutes doing things that are just sort of coming up. And I, and I felt it was, um, there were two things that were quite important about the event was the mix of people that we had. Um, and I remember Adam, it took us a while, didn't it, to figure out because we didn't want it to just be a one sided story. Yeah. Um, but it was the fact that Oricon was the sponsor at a, of an event like this. I felt that was really that connection point because it's like, you know, it wasn't that it was just about the infrastructure. It wasn't it wasn't sort of Oricon wearing the Oricon hat only for that sector. And I think that was that was a big play on connecting the pieces together. And I'd like to see in that marketplace is part of that as well. But um, that presence of um, of those big consultancies coming, you know, coming and sitting down with academia. And I know it sort of happens because I know that there are there are um, engineering firms working with the universities and at that sort of level. The other thing that I think, um, that other than the fact that we got all those, you know, the people that were together in the room on the panel was the people that were there. Um, so I think we've gone a long way um, with this event to actually get academia industry with the different sectors um, and and just the city's local government in the room and then and then national government, if that's what you want to call it here. So pathway forward is that blueprint is actually, you know, the marketplace is, is a is a tangible thing, I think, that we need to build and we need to generate more awareness around and, you know, direct everyone to digital twin digital twin global um but the blueprint i think the blueprint is the is the path forward and and getting as many as we can um in that conversation to provide that feedback um by the due date and then moving forward on that path for um what does a blueprint look like for new zealand 
and and um, yeah, having these key key partners on the journey with us that aren't aren't thinking of of the digital twin as just for their sector, but they're thinking of digital twin as the capability across all sectors that we need and we really need to move with. Yeah. So 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 let's um let's transition to the blueprint. That was indeed the third panel that we had. Um, mm-hmm. K- Kerry, you were on that with with Kat and and Stacy from um from Hamilton. Um, and you know the the blueprint itself is is a whole separate interview, right? So we're, we're not going to do a post mortem on that. But you know, suffice to say, that there's a bit of a blueprint that now exists. It's out in draft, um, and anyone listening and watching can head to digitaltwinhub.global and get a copy of that. But you know, it starts to it starts to sort of lay out some component parts of what one might want to start building into something that resembles a national strategy. To date, we've been developing it for Australia Mm -hmm. and New Zealand. Uh, Kerry, I'm going to start with you. Coming out of the summit, um, where where is your headspace at in terms of the Australia-New Zealand digital twin blueprint you know, we, we wrap it up, we get the feedback, but, but going forward, um, are you feeling that Australia, New Zealand can continue to kind of, you know, partner up and advance this, or is, is there a moment in time where we need to peel off, you know, nation by nation and New Zealand really needs to sort of own this, take it forward and make it sort of fit for what it needs to sort of fit to where's your headspace with sort of moving the blueprint forward for New Zealand? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a good, it's a good question, and it's certainly something that um, I wasn't alone in thinking about on the day. Um, I had quite a few really interesting conversations, um, just sort of gathering those different perspectives. And I think maybe the place to start is uh, we did a little bit of reflecting on um, the UK experience, and mm. so you know, obviously their journey started with the Gemini principles, and then obviously I think it was the document that around the data for the common good. Mm-hmm. Um, And there are a few questions um, being asked around, you know, does New Zealand actually need that foundational document? And and is that a different document, say, to what might be appropriate in Australia? Um, And can those things actually really define the guiding principles that we need to work on, um, either collectively or probably collectively and also individually, I think. So um, obviously there's great benefit in, you know, collective intelligence and bringing it together, of course. Um, but through that panel, I think having K Marie on it and bringing the First Nations perspective, it, it really kind of opened my eyes to some of the concepts that she was bringing her in around, you know, so the data tikanga is constantly evolving. Mm. And, um, you know, the Maori perspective on um, land, for example, and on the natural resources and natural environment is quite different. Um, and I think it is really a great opportunity for us to bring that in right at the very beginning. Um, and I think personally, um, what that's going to take is more than engagement. I think that will take co-creation um, mm. to get anything really meaningful out of it for the future. And uh, what I like the most about that perspective, of course, is because they're talking about generations and generations to come. Mm. Um which is, you know, the sort of a long-term view that we can um, really benefit from in this place, in this space, sorry. So I do wonder to answer your question whether there's regional annexures to be had um, Mm. on a consolidated strategy, Um, just to take account of all of the different perspectives. And, you know, obviously you'll know um, what the landscape looks like in Australia. um, And I suspect it's quite different. Yeah, so there'll be similarities, and also, you know, things that are, are really important to us um, nationally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so hearing hearing you say that, Kerry, kind of brings a little bit of comfort to me that pitching this document, which we've been, you know, we've all collectively been working on for about eighteen months now, pitching as as a bit of a blueprint, as opposed to sort of here's the strategy for our respective nations. Um, putting it out there as a blueprint, the ink is still a bit wet you know, really a lot of work still to be done. Seems like we kind of landed at a, at a good place for it now to be nurtured and, you know, moulded into sort of what New Zealand needs it to be. So that's, um, 
that's comforting. Um, Janet, um, where are you, your views on this one? Similar, different? You bring a lens of academia as well. Um, what are your thoughts? I think um, as much as it is, and I agree with Kiri, like we sort of, we, we split, um, which we always knew was something that was we were probably would... coming. Yeah. 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 But I, I think that there's a real opportunity um, for some rubbing off of what we're doing over here to over to um, over to Australia. So again, even at that level where, 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 yes, they might be two separate paths that, you know, that, that work that we're doing to actually ensure that the two paths are even connecting as well, mm -hmm. I think is going to be fundamental. Um, and I do think that, um, I think, was it someone that someone, I think it might've been Kay Marie that said it, and it might've been at a different event, but um, I, I remember someone saying it's ours to lose. Like if we don't get it right, I don't well, know. I said, I said that at the end. I, yeah, I said yeah, as an yeah. outside yeah. looking in, I, yeah, I just sorry. feel yeah, like yeah. It's, it, it's, your, it, it's yours to stuff up now from here. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, so I think that that, and I, and I do believe that, you know, out of um, on a use case basis and the strength of the investment in Australia and, um, yes, it's individual pockets of, of great work, but even, even from that, we could learn quite a lot um, in terms of the marketplace. And I think mm. we could learn quite a lot in terms of um, delivery. But, mm. but I do think that going back to what Kerry was saying, I think we've, we've got an opportunity here to build the foundation correctly um, for New Zealand, but also as, a, as something to learn from for our neighbours across the road, um, across the water, but also through the Smart Cities Council network, you know, we could, you know, into Europe, India, Southeast Asia, America, mm. um, the approach that we're taking um, is quite unique, I feel, and we just need to, we just need to continue the momentum. Yeah, absolutely. So momentum was kind of part of the final session of the day. There was about two and a half hours of mm. workshopping, further knowledge sharing, and, and, and networking as well. Yeah. You know, I, whilst I was based, you know, in Australia, while it was going on, I had the video feed in there, and it looked like there was some really good, just wholesome getting together, sharing, and and you know, meeting others. Um, we had three kind of breakouts and deep dives, one around policy, you know, what might the optimum policy environment look like for, for sort of action and investment. Second one was around sort of the commons, we called it, you know, what are those standards, um, best practices, what does good look like? And then the third one was, um, uh, was around the enablers, you know, so yeah, you know, we need tech and we need data to fire up a digital twin and also good capability. Um, so a lot of conversation going on. We've, we've still got some notes yet to type up and we will release those, but a couple of words to summarize what you, what you sort of felt and saw and heard in those, uh, in those deep dive sessions. Kerry, do you want to start with a few, few points to share? Um. I think a lot of people found it uh, tricky just to choose which group they wanted to go mm, into, mm. Um, you know, because everybody has a perspective on each, um, you know, whether it be policy or standards or actually looking at examples and, and capabilities. So um, I sat in the policy section um, primarily because I was interested to listen um, to the, you know, to the other people who believe that they have something really strong to offer in the policy, mm -hmm. um, in the policy area, and also those people who um, have a lot of experience to lend. Um, and and I think that was it was really interesting for me because it was academia, it was asset owners, it was people um, who are responsible for the various different policies. Um, there was a huge amount of conversation um, of as you can imagine and. Um, a lot of alignment, which I think is probably the, the most pleasing thing for me. Um, mm. You know, we're all making, as I said at the beginning, we're all generally moving in the same direction. Um, and the feeling certainly from the policy group was that that needs to come from the top down, but also from the bottom up. Um, mm. And so the meeting in the middle is really where that ecosystem um, for New Zealand will actually start to thrive. So um you know, it wasn't a lot. The other thing I think I really liked about it was there wasn't a lot of sitting around the table and sort of saying, well, are you going to do it? It's, mm. um, you know, who's going to lead this? And, you know, the, while there isn't actually a set in stone, you know, group who were tasked with, you know, delivering this for New Zealand, um, I don't think that actually matters. That was the feeling that I got. So 
um, it's not disjointed, it's not disconnect, disconnected in terms of the thinking. Um, mm. So the will is there and, and it, as you say, it is ours to lose, but mm. um, it doesn't feel like that's going to happen at the moment. So. No, no, absolutely not. Uh, Janet, your takeaways from that afternoon session? I was lucky enough to float and mm. not, not not really contribute to any of them. And so it was really interesting because the policy one, I did feel that the same as what Kerry said, I did feel that there were the two parts. There was the the top, you know, the, the experience of the top down approach and then the the need very much voiced the need for it to be bottom up as well, which was quite interesting. And and in all three groups, people were engaged Um um, it started to get a bit repetitive towards the sort of end, which just meant that people were coming together and solidifying their thoughts. Um, it was interesting, the enablers one uh, was very much a learning exercise. Like I felt that that was so valuable for everybody that was there because everyone was just just contributing what they were doing, what they had experienced, what they had um Almost some of the what not to do type of thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, and there was, again, this different perspectives that, that Kerry talked about in terms of the asset owners and academia and, and, the, and the, um, the people that can, can make it happen or support it to happen. And um, so I felt like the enablers one was just the session itself was valuable um, just to get that group together. And there was enough representation um, to actually cut across, to be honest, all three themes, the policy, the commons and, and the enabler just in that conversation. And then when I went to listen to the, the commons one, um, that one was the, I, I feel that one was on par with the policy one in terms of the different perspectives. Um, and, and there was definitely no holding back from, from <laughs> thoughts, the thoughts in that one. And, I've, and, and, and the facilitators had a, um, I mean, they had so much and we've, we've seen the output of, of the different groups and that one had the, yeah, they just got so much down on paper. Um, and I and I feel that that was because they nutted quite a lot of things out. They nutted out quite yeah. a lot of things because, you know, the standards came up through the- I was going to say, the, whenever the standards involved. Yeah, <laughs> it just was like, but it wasn't just, as, it was it was just a different, it was a real different feel with that one. It was a, it was a very structured conversation um, because, and they worked through it progressively. So the education piece was there, the standards piece was there, you know, so they went through the, the investment side of things and, I felt like in, often when you go to an event, you you hear, you hear, you hear, you hear, you know, you hear lots of stuff and you and you network, which is great, but you never get the opportunity really at events to do what we, you know, to do to to, to get together and nut out what you've actually heard. And often you mm. get back on your plane or you go back home and you, and the next day you go back to your day job and you haven't been able to nut it out with like-minded people that have heard the same conversations in an, in a way that sort of. I, I, a lot of people out of those three groups would have walked away definitely with something even for themselves to to move forward with. I feel I feel yeah. I feel the exercise itself was was um and that's what I was hearing as well. That's what I was hearing in terms of the end, um the tail end where there was an opportunity then after the um afternoon tea, both in conversations and with conversa in, con in terms of conversations with me. That's what I was hearing that that there was a coming together of thinking based on what was heard in the morning you know, um, based on the fact that we could discuss it at the same event. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, okay, so we've gone through the program and we're sort of at time now, um, friends. So we, uh, we we need to unfortunately bring a close to this conversation, even though I feel we could sort of keep going. You know, ne next steps is all, always important. You know, we've got the draft blueprint out for comment. Um, the plan is to update that as a final and release it at, Digital Twin Week, uh, which is 18 to 22nd of October this year, um, we've been uh, we've been seeking sort of expressions of interest and feedback from those that attended the summit, um, and we sort of floated out there the idea of you know would you like to participate in maybe some sort of a working group to to help nurture a New Zealand you know specific version of what comes next after the blueprint. So it seems like we've got some you know, good momentum and, and some strong interest. Is there anything in particular, you know, give me a word or two uh, briefly on sort of what next really needs to look like. Janet, can we start with you? I think Kerry hit it on the um, on nail and hit it was, um, we, we not just need to engage with stakeholders, we need to co-create. Yeah, mm. I think we need to step it up. So we've, we've, we've provided this opportunity to connect people They've engaged somewhat um, at the event. Um, they will continue to have conversations, but it's that co-creation. I think that's where we need to move to now. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Kerry? 
Yeah, I know, I agree. I think the, the opportunity to give feedback and to input into the blueprint blueprint is there. Mm. Um, and, you know, there's been a lot of chatter on LinkedIn and the various other networks um, about this. So, you know, I'd, I'd really like for people now to, to put that thinking into action and, and contribute um, to the blueprint. And my feeling is that the use cases um, will just continue in parallel, continue to evolve. So what I'd really like to see is that um, those are collected up so that, you know, we can start to share those on a regular basis. And obviously, you know, the Digital Twin Hub and Digital Twin Week are two really key parts of um, how that can be made to happen. So I think that would be my preferred next step is, you know, the yes, the policy and the documentation is progressing. Um, the co-creation absolutely has to happen with the right stakeholders. Um, and then in parallel mm -hmm. is the encouragement, you know, to keep those um, cases going to, keep people um, encouraged to con uh, contribute and to learn. So I think, yeah, though, bringing those two things together will, will be great over the next sort of six months. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And of course, I totally agree with, with both of you. Um, so thanks so much, um, guys, for coming on and participating in this debrief. Um, for those listening and watching, uh, Kerry Niven from Oricon has been with us alongside uh, our director in New Zealand for the Smart Cities Council, Jana McBool. Um, and for those that aren't subscribing to the Smart Cities Chronicles podcast, you can do so. Head to your favourite podcast platform. You'll find us there, the Smart Cities Chronicles. Uh, and also from a Digital Twin perspective, if you're not subscribing to the Digital Twin Hub, head along there, digitaltwinhub.org. Uh, you'll get all sort of your Digital Twin goodness there, news and events and chatter and all other great digital twin things. But for now, we're going to sign off. My name is Adam Beck, uh, host of The Chronicles. Uh, look forward to bringing you another edition and episode soon. Everyone stay safe and healthy. Dodge that COVID thing. Look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks, everyone.